Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at the standard brush. So to bring up the standard brush, just go ahead and tap B for your brush menu set, tap S for all the brushes that are listed under the S category, and then go ahead and find standard, which hotkey for that would be T. So real quickly you can hit tap uh, B, S, T, and that'll get you to standard. That's just a quick way of uh, doing the pre-setup hotkeys that are uh, already available for you. So for the standard brush you can see we've got a Z add and a Z subtract. So for like any other thing in sculpting we're going to either add to the surface or we're going to subtract from the surface. Okay, I'm going to put it back on Z add. You can see there's this thing called Z intensity which if we drag that all the way to the right that's going to give us a much bigger stroke much bigger buildup for the surface of this. So if I drag that all the way down to something like 4, you can see the effect is barely even visible. So something around 20 to 40 should give you um, the results that you're looking for. Maybe put it on around 30 and that will give us a nice buildup for this. Obviously brush size matters for this. Uh, we've already looked at brush size. Just tap S, drag your slider left and right, that's going to give you the size of your brush. Now I wanted to show you we can either add or subtract this way, but there's a hot key for this that's going to make it really easy for you to switch between adding and subtracting. If you hold down Alt while you draw, it's going to cut into the surface. And if you just draw on the surface, it's going to raise. Again, Alt will cut away. And if you hold down Shift, that's going to give you smooth. So between adding and subtracting and smoothing, you're going to be able to build up and take away from your surface and get nice smooth results pretty quickly. So that's for the uh, standard brush. Let's take a look real quick at this uh, lazy mouse, which you probably don't see some of these options here. I've done a custom setup for some different things that I like. Um, so you can go ahead and go under your stroke type. And let's go ahead and dock this off to the right. So I just click this little icon right here. It's going to dock it over here. So to turn lazy mouse on or off, you can click this button. And it's going to turn it on or off. Uh, you can also tap L for lazy mouse. So you can turn that on and off with the hot key, which is probably what I use quite a bit. Now you see this lazy radius. Right now it's hard to even see exactly what's kind of going on. If you take this lazy radius and put it up to something like 20, you're going to start to see with your stroke this line that comes off of where you're drawing. And basically basically what this lazy mouse is doing is it's taking your your mouse positions and it's averaging it so it builds a nice uh, clean line for you and it can be rather accurate too. Uh, the further you drag this lazy radius, the longer this distance is from your mouse cursor. Um, another thing I make sure I play around with is this lazy step, which I'll drag that down to something like 0 0.01, and you can see that's right here. All these different options that I have have actually been taken from the stroke palette and moved off to here so I can easily get to them. And let's take a look at this real quick, how to actually do that. Um, so you go under Preferences, Config, and you say Enable I, enable custom, Customize, and go ahead and click on that. Now at that point you're going to be able to take um, something like I have Lazy Step, Lazy Smooth, Lazy Radius, and I don't have this relative here. So if I hold down Control and Alt, click on Relative, and drag it up here, like so, I can move that up to, um, you know, up, up here on my my tool area. And I can actually take these and drag them around. So maybe I want this button right next to the lazy mouse. And I'll have the lazy step here and the lazy smooth here. Now once I'm done with this um, layout, I can go to Preferences and turn off Enableize, Customize, and this will put everything back into its normal working mode. And go back to Preferences and say Store Config. 
and it's going to tell you that it's going to load up this configuration every time you start a ZBrush. Okay, so back to this here. This lazy uh, radius, we've gone over that, the lazy step, you can see if we have that really high, it's going to only do these very few kind of dots, right? Um, let me tap U and bring up my intensity so we can see that a little bit better. So you can see what's going to drag out here in a line. This is the lazy step set to something like 3.57. Um, so I like to put that down to 0 0.01. And then now whenever I drag out, you can see how tight and smooth everything is. That's because the strokes are really, really close together. If I put that on one, you can see how it's kind of chunky. And if I drag it up a little more, you can see how it's spacing that stuff out. I like to put that down to 0 0.01 and then that way it gives me a nice clean stroke. And you saw this is something you're going to encounter with the lazy mouse every now and then you get this might get a weird stroke that just goes across your model. I think it's some kind of bug or something like that, but you know, if it happens you're just going to have to hit undo and then redo your stroke over again. And then we also have this lazy smooth which is just going to actually kind of smooth out your uh, your mouse movement. So I usually put this something like 15. The lazy smooth, I don't even really worry about that all that much. So you might have something like this here. So that's going to give you nice and predictable and controllable results. Now I have noticed that if you want to be really precise about something in this lazy radius, you might have to uh, turn that up a little bit more and that's going to kind of make it a little bit easier for you to do really long uh, arcing kind of curves. So if I want to draw along this, this might feel kind of odd to draw this way at first, but after you get used to it, it's kind of um, really a fun way to draw um, strokes. And now I wish this same kind of option was available in Photoshop. And I did see someone actually wrote a, uh, a little tool that would actually allow this to work in Photoshop, and I've tried it out. And it's kind of neat to work in Photoshop that way as well. So you can see after I've drawn the stroke out, if I don't like a particular area or didn't really make the best stroke for me, I just kind of smooth that out just a little bit. And another thing I might want to take a look at is um, the stroke type. So right now it's on dots. Um, if you put it on freehand, you might get a little bit smoother uh, kind of stroke. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference for that. Um, this mouse average, if you put that on 8 and raise that up, that's going to uh, help give you a nice smooth stroke. That does help somewhat in certain situations. And the last thing we'll take a look at is changing our alpha shape. So you can see that if you put it on this alpha 39, we've got a black and white map that builds up from uh, dark all the way up to light at a point. And you can see what's going to happen if we have this on. It's going to draw a stroke. I'm going to lower my intensity to about 40, tapping U the intensity or you can change it right up in here and you can see what that's going to do for that stroke type it's going to build up real soft and then have a really sharp point in the middle and then fall back off again so it's going to build up you can see the contour of what this is doing it's got this kind of V shape 
that we have going on here. And I actually like to use this for uh, making cuts and wrinkles. Um, you might want to lower your brush size. And you can see if you just kind of quickly draw on the model, how you can build up a skin type of texture that's maybe like reptile or something. So this is real easy for you to um, to do this kind of work with, with the lazy mouse turned on. Um, you can do this type of work where you're doing these random kind of uh, cut patterns, but then you can also take it and you can um, be very precise with what you're creating. And I'm just going to kind of fade that off as it goes up into the body a little bit. If I hold down Alt, then I'm going to dig into the surface. Smooth that out just a little bit. And this can kind of help you build maybe even a hard a hard edge for something. So you can see how I took um, this alpha here with the standard brush and the lazy mouse and just kind of drug along here. And that built up an edge for me and just holding down shift, just kind of smoothing this out just a little bit. Now if I hold down alt, I can dig in, which that was really strong. So I'm just going to hold down shift and kind of smooth that out for that transition there. And hold down. Actually, I'm sorry, I was holding down shift to, uh, to do the smooth. Holding down alt will dig into the surface for me. And hold down shift to uh, smooth. Now, when I first started using ZBrush, this was the brush that I was using the most. All on, you know, I was just adding and subtracting away from the surface and just changing the options on the uh, standard brush to uh, help me in different situations. Um, if I was doing something really large on the model, or if I was doing something small, so I'll tap L to get that lazy mouse to turn off over here and uh, now I've kind of learned to use different brushes for different things so I'm going to turn that alpha off you can see how it was going to make that point there if, uh, if that alpha was on which could be kind of cool if you want to do some kind of spikes or something like that But if I wanted to have this more of a uh, blobby kind of surface, then I can just go ahead and turn the alpha off at that point. I'm going to hit tap U, lower my intensity to something really low, and you can see how that's going to change things quite a bit. It's going to kind of puff this uh, chest area out. So I can be real subtle with this thing. And then smooth those results. Okay, I'm going to smooth some of this away. I'm still not too convinced on some of the shapes of that. Okay, there's a there's a look at the smooth brush and some of the different options that you can uh, use with the smooth brush to get our standard brush to give uh, some different results.